Hey guys, you know I said I was going to come back, got a quick video about this book, a short story. I, I had to do this story years ago in college, a series of short stories, and this particular story is called The Bound Man, and it's by a woman named Eels Eisinger. Um... She's a German woman, a German Jewish woman. But we had to do um, a synopsis of the book, and I I did it. You know how you just do stuff to get by. So, but I remember the story, and the story is about a man who woke up and his wrists were tied with rope uh, real tight. The rope was wrapped all the way around his whole body and all the way down to his ankles. And he, it was morning when he uh, woke up and he managed to, you know, uh, rock himself and uh, managed to get up. But he he realized that he had been robbed because he didn't have anything in his pocket, his knife, and even his shoes were taken off his feet. So at first he thought maybe it was some children who had done that because it was enough play in his wrist to kind of, you know, move it a little bit. Even with his ankles, it was an, uh, a little play. It's like somebody really wanted him to be able to move a little bit. But still... They he was bound. So anyway, he he managed to hobble and get up on his feet, and he hobbles. But he was in some thicket, so he had to kind of be careful because the the stickers were in his feet. And he fell down again, and he went to sleep again. And he realized when he woke up again, he had figured out enough about the ropes and how to get himself up. So he knew how to do that. But he he knew he was going to have to find something to eat pretty soon. So uh, that afternoon, he still, you know, he hobbled a little bit, and, and, uh, lay down and, and get back up and hobble some more. So he, this man that owned a circus, <clears throat> I, yeah, you know, you don't know what time period this story is written, but it's older time because they talk up, they use the word village and different words, so it had to be in the 1800s, I believe. So, but anyway, he um kept hobbling, and uh, this man that owned a circus saw him and he ended up putting him in, bringing him to his tent. and not tended to him, but, you know, just amazed at how, what happened to him. And somehow or another, this man ended up being one of the main acts in his circus. You know, the story tells all about the circus acts and how the people from near and far came to see him. The bound man, that's what they call him, the bound man. So he he learned to maneuver with the, the the ropes, and he could do uh, somersaults and backflips, and the people were cheering, and just, yeah, oh man, he, he was drawing the crowd. But this story goes on from like April to early fall. That's how long these people were, he entertained these people. So... <clears throat> The the um, circus owner's wife would tend to him and, and help him bathe. But in time, his clothes started getting tattered. And there was a time when the people in the village couldn't figure out why he wouldn't undo himself or why they wouldn't undo him. And so, some some people would sneak in after the circus was over and try to cut his ropes. And he didn't want that. The bound man didn't want to be freed. And neither did the circus owner because he was uh, uh, bringing in other crowds. So 
they neither one of them wanted him to want to free him. So the people saw how the circus owner's wife was tending to the man. So they didn't say anything, but she kind of I don't I gonna say fell in love with him, but she had compassion for him. And she was kind of worried about what he would do because she knew that he was going to eventually have to put on some more clothes. And to put on more clothes, they have to take the ropes off. But anyway, the story goes on and the circus owner had some wolves. I don't know what he was doing with wolves. They were part of some act. But one wolf got a loose and it was attacking cows in that village. And... So, the bound man was at the edge of the river one day, and uh, the the wolf came up to him and came out of the woods, and the bound man, even with his hands tied, he managed to kill the wolf. And the circus owner uh, found out about it, and he didn't want the people to know that the bound man had done such a thing because people would think they would couldn't believe he would do that with his bare hands. So he felt that it wouldn't be such a uh, a drawn ticket if they knew that he could kill a wolf. If you can kill a wolf, why can't you uh, let yourself free? So they didn't want nobody. He didn't want nobody to know that he had done that. But anyway, somehow or another. The crowd was getting kind of, I don't know, bored with the man because they wanted him to free himself. And he ended up being in the cage with the wolves, with uh, a wolf. And the wolf was getting ready to attack him. But the bound man ended up reaching for a revolver and he shot the wolf in the middle of his head. But when he shot him, the circus owner knew that it was time to let the man go because the crowd went crazy. They wanted to kill him. And I don't know if they were trying to kill him because he he didn't seem to be bound or they thought it was a hoax. But anyway, he had to run for his life. And he and the ropes just fell uh, at his feet and he was... He ran through the woods and he kept on running. The story ends kind of funny. He he was running and he, he did get away. But during that time when I first read, that was years ago. I know probably ew, 15 years ago, maybe more, when I read this story. And it, it just didn't mean anything. But now when I think about it, after I've come through you know, different addictions and things, and even I was addicted to my ex. I was addicted to a, a lover that I had, a married lover. I was addicted to that kind, and, and it was abuse, but it wasn't the physical abuse, the mental abuse, because I, I, my ex, we and we broke up and went back together so many times, I can't even count. But even in the, the, the married man, he, he would say he was going to kill me. And he, he, he knew not to, you know, hit me, uh, harm me physically, but he would always try to pinch me or bite me or do stuff like that. But every time he threatened me to kill me, something bad would happen to his family. His his family would, oh, just terrible things. So he finally realized that he couldn't, it's best that you don't do me that way. But they gotten so bad, the last time he threatened me, Oh, I would say six months after he threatened me and I managed to get away from him, he ended up getting a, a death sentence with his health. So the next year he was dead. So that addiction that I had to him was over, but it ended in death. And the addiction that I had going back with my ex and the addiction I had to drugs 
it it is funny how people say, and I would always say, "Oh, I want to be free from this. I want to be free," and and other people cannot set you free. They they don't know how to take the ropes off your hand, and even if you take the ropes off your hand, you they your ankle and your feet, and you might have duct tape on your mouth and can't even tell people and it, it's like you do have duct tape on your mouth because you can't tell people how to free you that's one thing you cannot do i've never been able to do it so i think we may be addicted to just like the bound man he he seemed to enjoy being entertaining the people and being, you know, the main attraction in the circles. He enjoyed that because when the people would sneak in at night to set him free, oh, he didn't want that, you know. He would be a nobody with those ropes off him. But he ended up having, when he killed that, that wolf, um, then he ended up, he saw the crowd, when the crowd saw what he could do that he really wasn't bound he had to run for his life because they were getting ready to kill him so we have to i think we have to free ourselves and not necessarily run for your life but you have to leave that crowd of people you have to change maybe your friends you have to change the route you take home but you have to let people go after you freed yourself because people will say you weren't bound anyway. And, you know, it's strange. I, you know, I tell my story about being addicted to drugs and stuff. And people don't believe my story. <laughs> I mean, no, you were never bound by that. How? How? And it's like, okay, you don't have to believe it then. Okay. And, but I know how bound I was. I, I do know. And anybody that's been bound by an addiction, be it sugar or soda, sex, oh, you would be surprised. No, you wouldn't be surprised at how many people are bound by sex addictions. So the human, humans are uh, I don't know. We we are easily addicted. And I don't know about the animals. I I don't know. I don't know about this, sir. I know I look at my dog, and she might have <laughs> she might have addictions too. Yeah, she got addictions. She's addicted to going in the kitchen and sitting there. I mean, I'm not even thinking about going in the kitchen. She's sitting there waiting. It's in the dark waiting for me to walk in there and start cooking something and wait on me to spill it on the floor. So either you're addicted or you have faith. Maybe dogs have faith that you're going to drop something on the floor. But back to the uh, being addicted. But, man, but this bound man, when they... Uh, they didn't believe that he was addicted. He ran for his life. And like I said, running for your life, is it means getting out of harm's way. And I don't think anybody would harm you, but it's a lot of hate when you do free yourself. Um, people who are going through addictions and things, and when you, alcohol, whatever it is, when you get yourself straightened out, don't be upset and hurt when you find out that people seem to not like you as much when you you were addicted to alcohol and drugs. Because, I don't know, misery loves comp company? I don't know, but that's what that story is about, to me, the bound man. So, you know, I promise, I, 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 well, I didn't promise, I said I was going to tell that. Uh, tell you about the bound man. And the next story I want to talk about is Seven Floors. It's a it's a good short story too. Uh, I think it's by Gino 
Um, I can't think of his last name. He's an Italian, but it's a, it's a short story too. But anyway, I'm not gonna be here long. But that's it, and I'll I'll be back with some more goodies for you guys. Okay, bye.